Today, I'll be reviewing the Vever 145 welding machine. Right off the bat, there's something misleading about this welding machine. Because it's called a MIG-145, MIG stands for Metal Inert Gas. And the reason that's misleading is because there is no gas hookup on this machine. You can't use MIG wire with this machine because it requires gas. It requires CO2 or argon gas, and there's no place to hook this machine up for gas. So you can only use flux core with this machine. This is about a $160 machine, so if you have a budget of $200, this is in your price range. In the manual, this machine talks about being able to run MIG, stick, and TIG welding. TIG welding you can't do with this machine because it doesn't have hookups for gas like we talked about. So right out of the box, this is only capable to do flux core welding. This lead's kind of interesting in the way that you take the nozzle off because it's not threaded and you don't just push it on. It has a spring that kind of acts like a seal in there. And so you just give it a twist and it kind of pushes itself off. Then to put it back, you can either push it or twist it the same way and it kind of slides back in. The wire this can use is either 0.8 or one millimeter thickness. So to test this machine, I'm gonna use 0.8 millimeter inner shield wire. I'll start with the wire feed lead and I'll attach it to the negative terminal. and we attach the ground to the positive terminal. We got the leads all hooked up, now it's time to add the wire. So to put the spool on, you just have to untwist this wing nut. Make sure you keep track of what order those came off in. Once that's off, I add the spool to this peg, making sure that the wire is going to feed through the bottom. I don't want it to feed out the top, because then it's gonna go through a hard bend to get into the lead. I want it to go straight from the spool into the lead. Next, I'm gonna open this up. This knob pulls to the front, and this will lift up. And this wheel on the bottom, it has two different settings. On the right, it has a 0.8 setting, which is what we're gonna use for this wire. But if you're using one millimeter wire, you would flip this around to the other side so we can get the proper grip on the wire to feed. So now I'm gonna carefully cut the wire from where it's hanging out here and push it through this spot right here. Then just push it through that until it comes out where those rollers are. I messed up slightly. I forgot to add this resistance back to this before feeding the wire through. And once that wire is pushed through the lead a couple inches, I'm gonna drop that down, pull this up, then I'm gonna add a little bit of tension with this knob, pulling it down. I'm gonna make sure the setting up front is set to MIG because it's gonna feed the wire only on MIG mode. And at the tip of the torch, you just wanna untwist this contact tip at the front, then just pull the trigger until wire comes out the front. I believe I found why it wasn't feeding properly. When the wire was getting to the front of the lead, it was getting caught. I detached the wire feeding lead, took the wire from it, and just kind of had to fight with it to get it to go back in and feed properly. So now that that's fixed, let's close the rollers and let's see if that worked. Now that it's come out the front, I'm gonna reattach the contact tip and put the cup back on. So to start, I'm going to be welding some 3 16 plate, and I'm having both of the settings straight in the vertical position. And it ends up being 17.2 volts and 90 amps. I'll leave a link in the top right corner for the technique I'm going to use to weld this. It's the exact same technique I used for the Harbor Freight welder I have. So when I tried welding at 90 amps and about 18 volts, it wasn't enough amps to actually melt the metal, but when I turned it up to 110 amps, it was able actually to begin welding. And I've used a machine like this before that was a Harper Freight machine, and it used AC current instead of DC current, which this one uses, 
and it's so much better and so much easier to control DC inner shield welding. It wasn't difficult to remove the spatter, it just kind of flew off as soon as I hit it with the wheel. I increased it then to 130 amps, and I think this is the sweet spot. 130 amps is the sweet spot. I thought when I was running this that it was burning kind of weird, so that's why I stopped early. But this has the best fusion and most consistency out of either of the amperages I used. And then I turned the machine all the way up to the maximum settings, 145 amps and about 24 volts, and it did not like that. The power in the motors seemed to be like shifting up and down, so there would be spots where the wire would be flowing nicely, and then other spots where the wire would be like tapping out of the machine. I think because the, the motors weren't pushing the wire at a consistent rate. Another problem I saw with this welder was that when I pulled the trigger, it would slowly just creep out wire, just barely moving at all, and then it would start going the speed I set it to. So I think that's the biggest weakness with this welder, is the power behind the rollers. This welder would easily be one of the best inner shield welders for under $120 if those motors were better. If you just have simple projects you're using, this is a good welding machine for that. But I think the control you have up at the front, being able to finely tune the amperage and voltage, that is something you're not gonna find in a welding machine at this price point. When the machine is on, the fans that pull air from the back and push out the front, they're powerful. I could feel it from about a foot in front of the machine. So you won't have any problems with this machine overheating. And one part about this machine that confuses me is even when I've been using a Harbor Freight welder or a stick welder, at lower amperages, they've tripped my breaker. But this machine, at full settings, full amps, full voltage, didn't trip the breaker, the entirety of that weld. So if you just need a welding machine that can get your simple projects done, doesn't require a lot of maintenance, and is very easy to control the parameters, this is a good machine for you. I wanna thank Vever for sending me this machine to review, and if you wanna pick up this welding machine, I'll leave a link for them down below.